Well, hello, uh, folks. Uh, welcome to our third lecture. Uh, this is our CryEngine Programming Lecture Series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, a uh, visiting professor. And this uh, third lecture is going to be on, um, let me get the next one here, CryEngine Flow Graph Programming. And this lecture is on XML files. Now, if you recall, we talked about last time about X, the relationship between flow graphs and XML files. Flow graphs are saved as XML files. And that's what we're going to talk about. This is a very powerful feature, by the way. So uh, just bear with me on this lecture. You have just opened a flow graph. Okay, you already know how to do that because we went over that in the last two lectures. And you haven't said new or anything else yet. Uh, what I want you to do is go down to the bottom left corner as soon as you open it and, and note that the files folder, this guy right here, is empty. There's no files in that folder. Okay, so uh, that's the important part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the upper left of the flow graph where the file is and we're going to click on that and we're going to open. So you'll be opening the flow graph that was saved from the last lecture. And so obviously go to file open. Okay. And if I'm going too fast on this, just tell me and I'll slow down. All right. The next one is that what will happen now, it'll bring up <coughs> the directory, the, the root directory that the CryEngine comes in. And I'll see that there it is, the message, XML. Uh, and that's how I saved the file from the, the last lecture was the message XML using camel case. And we recall that all flow graph files are XML files. So I want to click on that so that I can open this and it will open in um, the um, it'll open in the flow graph editor. And there it is. So you now have the original flow graph saved from the last lecture. So this should look familiar to you. Remember you had your comment my first flow graph shows a simple message when the game starts. The other thing you had, you had a game start node and you had the debug display message node. And the message it displayed was hello world. Okay, and you also change your font size to nine. Okay, so that this should all be a review and this is what you should get now. All right, the next thing is what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go back to your main directory in your folder where your cry engine is and where that where that uh, XML document is, the message.xml. And I'd like you to left click on it to highlight it and then right click and the pop-up menu will come up that says open with. And I want you to scroll over to the right and I want you to open it with with notepad. Because changes made to your flow graph will be done directly from the XML file. I want to illustrate this very powerful feature. Now Note that the XML file is being opened with Notepad. Any simple text editor will do. This illustrates that an XML file is nothing more than simple text. As a matter of fact, all XML files are simple text. You might say, what's the big deal about that? You don't need any proprietary program to create XML files or to modify XML files or to open XML files. They can all because they're just simple text. They don't need any super duper program. So that's what we're going to illustrate here and see how that relates to flow graphs. So now we go to the next slide here and there is the open XML file uh, that we used inside our flow graph. Uh, and it's note that the uh, file opened in a simple text editor. It's open in Notepad. And this is it. Now, as we read through this, some of the stuff might look confusing. That's all right for now, okay, because we're just starting with XML files and the flow graph. Let's look at something that looks familiar. We see right here debug display message. That should look familiar. And we also see the message, hello world. Hey, that's familiar. Does that mean I can change the message from here just by typing over that? Yes, it does. Don't go changing a bunch of other stuff unless you're really sure what you're doing because you could mess up the flow graph then. But let's look on down. Oh, look at this. 
My first flow graph shows a simple message when the game starts. And notice the use of the underscores. Hey, I know what that is. That's from my comment, and the class is comment. Oh, yeah, this is beginning to make sense. I'm not sure what all the other stuff means, so we're just going to leave that alone for now until we find out more about how XML files work. But now, let's see what we can do with this. Let's see how this relates. If I come over here to this slide, this is where I took the, the text from the XML document. Okay, it shows a simple message when the game starts. And if you notice, this is my flow graph right here. And the flow graph comment is, my first flow graph shows a simple message when the game starts. If I'm in my flow graph and I roll my left mouse over, I just roll my mouse over the comment, a pop-up screen will come showing me exactly what that looks like from the XML document. Holy mackerel. Note that when the mouse is over the command, a pop, a comment, I'm sorry, a pop-up window shows the exact structure of the comment in the XML file. Now that is pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let me go over here and see what, see what we're going to do. What I want to do now, I want to change the comment to what it was to, I have changed this, these comments from the XML file. So I'm in, I'm in Notepad now. I'm back in Notepad, okay, with the open XML file. And I'm going to change, I'm just going to type in new comments. And the new comments are, I have changed these comments from the XML file. That's the only thing I'm going to change. I don't want to go changing other stuff because I could really mess this up. I want to be sure that when I do that, I save this so that it overwrites the old file. If I don't save it, it's not going to be a big deal. So be sure you save the changed file, the changed XML file. Now what do you think we're going to do? You got it. We're going to go back to the flow graph, and now we're going to open the new file. Now go back to the file menu and open the changed XML file again. All right. So what do you think we're going to see different? Well, what's going to happen going on to this, if I look down at the bottom left of my flow graph, I'll see there are two copies of the same file now because I opened it twice. The message and the message, they both have the same name. The one on the top is, is an imprint of the old flow graph. The one on the bottom is the imprint of the new flow graph. So you see you now have two files displayed with the same name. There really aren't two files made uh, back in the directory. This, they're imprints of the files. Note the location of the old and new flow graph files. Click on the new flow graph, which is the bottom one, and observe the change in the comments. So if I do that and I look at it, now what I'll see is different. In the comment will say, I have changed these comments from the XML file. All right, nothing else changed because I didn't mess around with anything else. So observe that the changes you made in the text editor on the XML file now appear in the comments section of your change flow graph. That is really super cool. So what I want to be able to do now, I can now delete the original imprint of the flow graph, the top one. So if I click on it to highlight it, then right click, I can disable it, I can rename the graph, I can delete the graph, or I can change folders. I want to delete the graph here, okay? That's what I want to do. So let's go over here. And here's a review of what we covered. Flow graphs are saved as XML files. No exceptions. XML files are pure text files. That's all they are. XML files can be edited in any simple text editor. Period. Like Notepad. Change to any flow graph may be done through a simple text editor. And what is really neat, understanding the structure of XML files can be a powerful tool when designing custom flow graphs, which means you can design your own nodes. You can design your own input ports. You can design your own output ports. And you don't need any fancy programming language to do it. All you need to do is understand the structure of XML files, which we'll be covering in future lectures, 
and then know how to use it in a simple text editor and how to type. That's it. That's it. No fancy programming code or anything like that. So this feature that, that the uh, CryEngine has with its flow graph is an extremely powerful feature, and I don't know what other editor replicates the, the simplicity of this, but this is really cool. Okay, so we'll, we'll be covering some new and exciting stuff in the future lectures. All right, so um, I want to thank, thanks for your attention to this lecture. Uh, this will conclude the lecture. Uh, if there, we, I'll stay, and if you have any questions or anything you want me to go over with you, I'll be happy to do so. Okay, thanks again for your attention.